What is the Trinity? Many skeptics seem to misunderstand this important doctrine of Christianity as a pagan idea or a modalist idea, but a brief explanation of the Trinity will explain that neither of these are correct. The core doctrine of the Trinity can be said in three sentences. There is one God, God is three persons, each person is fully God. This differs from a modalist understanding, which would say there is only one God who reveals himself in three different forms or persons, whereas the Trinity says there are three coexisting eternal persons who exist as one God. The Trinity also differs from a pagan grouping of gods who say there are three different gods who are simply one in purpose but are fully separate, whereas the persons of the Trinity are not different gods but one God. Most of those who misunderstand the Trinity tend to classify the Trinity as one of these, but they are both incorrect. The Trinity is not one God revealing himself as different forms, and the Trinity is not three different gods. The Trinity is one God who is three persons, and each person is fully God. The first person of the Trinity is the Father. He is the source of the Godhead and all things. He is transcendent, uncaused, beyond mere existence. He simply is. The second person of the Trinity is the Son, who is the Word of the Father. He is eternally begotten of the Father, uncreated, begotten, not made. His source is in the Father, and humans can approach the Father through the Son. The third person of the Trinity is the Holy Spirit, who is neither begotten nor created. He eternally proceeds from the Father. He is the active agent of God in the world and the guide of the Church. His source is in the Father as well, yet He has always existed. It is important to mention that the members interact with one another and the world. The Father sent the Holy Spirit like a dove onto the Son at His baptism. The Son sent the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. The Father created the world through the Son and the Holy Spirit. So there is present interaction within the Trinity. Now while the Father is the ultimate source, the Son and the Holy Spirit are not less in power or divinity. They are all eternal and all fully divine. They all coexist as one God, yet as separate persons of one undivided essence. They are eternally loving and love one another in perfect harmony. So there is no disagreement or division within the Trinity, because they share only one nature. A good but not perfect analogy has been likened to the sun. There is the star, the heat, and the rays. As long as the star has existed, it has been generating rays, and heat has proceeded from it. Likewise, as long as the Father has existed, he has been pouring out his being into the sun, and the Spirit has been proceeding from him. So it is important to understand what the Trinity is. There are three persons of one God, who coexist eternally as one God. Each is fully God and fully divine. The Holy Spirit and the Son submit to the Father's authority because there cannot be two masters. They find their source in Him, yet have always existed. So again, there is one God, God is three persons, each person is fully God.